everyone. Hello everyone. I'm Derek Wright and welcome to today's live stream. Today we're doing something a little new. Um, I'm reviewing a horn called the XO1650. Well, I mean, a horn review is not new for this channel. But um, having a company send me a horn to take a look at and give my opinion uh, is completely new. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of fanfare around this horn. I think they're trying to generate fanfare. But I've noticed like a post, a post on horn people about it. If not many people saying that they knew anything about it. So I'm here to fill in those gaps. First off, my impressions of this horn is that it is very, very well built. So a lot of the things that I take a look at right away, um, as far as as far as measuring the quality of an instrument, is there. Hold on, I need to figure out how to get rid of this thing. There we go. A lot of the things I take a look at when Evaluating a horn, for example, taking a look at the quality of the solder joints. All the solder joints here are really well done. There's no sloppy solder here. All of the tubing is put together well. For example, you can tell on a poorly made horn when you look at the two tubes entering this ferrule here. A lot of times the tubes are a little crooked moving into that ferrule. Uh, but not so on this horn. It's, it's done well. Um, so yeah, so it's clearly a very well-built horn. Um, it's unique in a lot of ways too. For example, it's got a lot of heft to it. But I know from some marketing from some companies, they would say that lighter is better and that you should always go for the lightest horn, but that's not true. Light is not necessarily bad. Heavy is not necessarily bad. A heavier horn will have sound that carries better, but maybe a little harder to play. A light horn will be easier to play, but the sound may not carry. So the best thing is to have a balance. But yes, on this horn, they definitely went for a little heavier, um, better carrying sound. The, they have a lot of, um, you know, they, they're selling it on, I'm going to take, I'm going to show you, um, our website here because it's now on our website. Hold on one second. I did not transform. So if you take a look here at our website, the horn is starting at $42.99 for the fixed bell model, and it's $45.49 for the detachable bell model. So I'd say that's a pretty good, pretty good price. Um, these horns are made in Taiwan. So there's probably a slightly less cost of labor there, which can contribute to the lower price. But as far as I know, labor in Taiwan is not super cheap so uh, I would say that's a really good price they're selling it on things like 3d slide to one piece lead pipe uh, just to be frank I don't think those things r really matter <laughs> um, and it's just a lot of times it's hard to market a horn because the only thing that really matters is how easy it how easy is it to play and how how good does it sound? Is the sound even? Is it a good sound? And of course, every manufacturer would just say that, yes, yes, their horn has the best sound. Um, phosphor bronze bottom caps. I mean, most valve machines have those. Um, bottom caps and casings made of yellow brass with rotors that 
are made of yellow brass will tend to stick a lot better than changing up the metals. So that's why you see a bronze bottom cap instead of a, a yellow brass bottom cap or something like that. Uh, but anyway, an adjustable thumb lever, an adjustable pinky hook, frankly, most, most new horns have, have them these days. But just wanted to show you um, mainly the pricing. It's $42.99 for fixed and $45.49 for the tachable. But let's get more to how the horn plays. Um, that's what you're here for, isn't it? So, the horn is easy enough to play. I'm not fighting the horn at all. Um, but the sound is a little on the brilliant side. It's more brilliant than, than I could use on a horn. However, if you're the kind of person that your sound is a little too tubby, this horn may be the horn for you. Also, I am using this with my standard mouthpiece, which is the, which is the Varus PF, um, which is on the smaller side with a number 17 bore. So it may play better with a larger mouthpiece bore. Um, but overall, I mean, there are more positive things to say about this horn than negative, but I do need to, but I do need to say the negative. And the negative is, is that I wish it just had a little bit more, a little more body in the sound. Um, but horns can really only be shown in comparison. So I'm going to play um, my horn just as a sound comparison for you to compare this XO horn with. Mm-hmm. 
So I know some of you may say it's unfair to compare um, a horn that costs $4,500 um, to a horn that costs $15,000, but they are marketing, marketing this as a professional horn. So I just thought that that would be the best way to show the difference. To be clear, I think this is going to be a great horn for, you know, for some people. I see there's a question here. How does a horn like this compare to the Kine 8D? So this is completely different from a Kine 8D. A Kine 8D would have just the exact opposite sound as this XO horn. The Kine 8D is a much larger sound, much more veiled and um, covered sounding, um, and just more low overtones. This horn, and actually say it in their marketing material, so I guess um, they are advertising it correctly, it, it has a very brilliant tone. So a lot of higher overtones, more, um, more of a carrying, more piercing sound. Um, so yeah, so again, if, if you're the kind of player and you're playing um, too dark, maybe a little bit too tubby, and you need something that's really going to focus it in, this might be the horn for you. Now, objectively, I would say it's very good that this horn has an even sound. By an even sound, I mean that the notes all sound like each other up a scale without any notes sticking. Uh, as you might have noticed, I am sensing some resistance in the mid to low register, so that just in the middle low register, so that just might be something to watch out for on this horn. Um, but yeah, these these valves feel great ergonomically. The horn is good. Um, it has a yellow brass lead pipe, which a lot of custom horns have. Although um, I question its presence on a horn at this price point, just um, yellow brass lead pipes aren't necessarily the most durable. They are subject to um, red rod eventually, which is why you see most horns either using gold brass or nickel silver, because both of those metals aren't susceptible to red rods. I should also show you the case here of which it's the worst part of the horn, but I would say if, if the case is the worst part of the horn, you're doing pretty good. Um, this case is just too big. Like I like the fact that they wanted to make it um, sleek looking and it is pretty thin, but it's just really wide. It's not gonna meet airline specifications um, at all. And while there's enough room to get it in the bin if there's room like if you're ever on a plane and they make you drop it in the bin it's not going to work for a comparison this Wiseman case which fits airline specifications um, almost exactly is far far shorter and far far uh, smaller so I so if I could give any recommendation to XO, it would be to try to find a case, even if it's just um, a, you know, a traditional a pyramid style case, I would try to find a case that was just smaller. Um, also strange to have a hard, a, a hard plastic case with a zipper. And there are these straps inside that hold down the horn itself. Um, so really, I would say if you're interested in this horn, uh, I would be looking at a, uh, at a third party case. So let me play a little bit more 
on the horn. I haven't played anything light yet. Um, just, you know, if you've tuned in and you've stayed on for this long, I would like to provide you with as much examples of playing on this horn as possible in case you're interested in taking a look at it. Of which, by the way, I, we will have it around the shop for a few more weeks. So if you want to come in um, to the shop, just come on in uh, and, um, to our shop in Keller, Texas, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And, um, you're welcome to you're welcome to try this horn and form your own opinions. Okay, let's try something low. So the Mozart was incredibly easy to play on this horn. Um, no problems, it just floated through all of the scales and the piece in general. I, I was really a big fan of how it played. Um, the low register um, has a little, little fuzziness to it, little resistance to it. Um, so, um, so yeah, so great on the Mozarts, not so great in the low stuff. Um, at least for me and my setup in this mouthpiece. But, you know, not every horn is for everybody. So I hope I gave a pretty fair review of this horn. Uh, most of the other horns I talk about, um, I, you know, been around them for a long time. This one, but this one I did take, I have had the horn for several weeks um, and have spent some time with it, trying it out because I wanted to give uh, good feedback to XO and um, be able to do a good review here. Uh, I'm looking in the chat and I'm not really seeing any other questions. By the way, thank you for the, um, I, you're welcome for the Allstate recordings. I'm sorry that they're so late this year. We've just had, um, there were just some logistical issues that, that delayed the videos, but uh, for those of you still waiting for the tuba and bass trombone videos, they'll be um, they'll be on soon. Uh, and I'm not seeing anything in the Facebook chat. I hope it's not broken or anything. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to send us a Facebook message or uh, email us at sales at houghtonhorns.com. Call us 817-993-6400. And you can visit our website to read more about the um, XL 1650 horn. Um, right now, we don't have any in stock um, ready to sell, but you can um, but you can order it. And again, we'll have this horn for a few more weeks for you to come on and um, 
come on over and give it a try. So thank you very much. I see John Erickson. Thank you for the info on this horn. Uh, you're welcome. Horn reviews are fun. I will see you guys next week. Thank you.